Coach, great having you on with us today. Obviously, great stretch here to end the season, five five wins in a row. But uh, I want to go back to the Texas Tech game after that off week. What was the biggest change for your group? Obviously, a lot can happen in an off week, and obviously it did. And what would you say the biggest factor, the biggest change in that week led to this end-of-the-year success for your group and obviously the offense? Well, I think the number one thing is we finally settled on um, five guys. So there for a while, it was either musical chairs, we were still rotating people, trying to figure out, you know, in game reps, who could do what. Um, and then I think about midway through the BYU game, you know, when Sydney goes in, you could kind of start feeling the thing ramping up, you know. And then we go to Iowa State, although we didn't run the ball very well that game, I thought that we did a very good job pass protecting. Um, and then and then in light of that, I mean, we're throwing the ball all over the yard. We handing the ball off, you know, even though it could have gone some yardage, probably wasn't the best idea because Sawyer was on fire, right? Uh -huh. So then we go in the off week and we add just one more piece to it, which was kind of the the mid-zone type play that we, we put in. But I think the two weeks, two and a half weeks of the same five guys playing together, right? Sydney and Ryan and Colton and Omar and, and Campbell started playing together. And then once you start building that chemistry, you know, my only regret is that, you know, we didn't figure that out sooner. Um, but I just think that that was the piece of the pie that, you know, we were always searching for. When you look at kind of how Sydney has developed, because, you know, you mentioned you wish you would have done it sooner. You know, how has he really turned a corner since when he got to Baylor to where he's at now playing at this, you know, really high level? Yeah, so we tried to do it during fall camp, you know, try to create some competition at left tackle and he was playing left guard too. So really what he was creating was competition at the left guard, left tackle spot. And for learning a new offense and then learning how we do things and all that stuff, right? Trying to move him back and forth was just like system overload, right? So I thought, well, let's just get, because Caden Siraki is doing an incredible job being a swing tackle. All right, so dire straits Caden's doing a great job we can just move I don't like flipping people right and left so but Caden can do it so I just I was like all right we'll sit on that let Sydney play one position and then when Campbell got hurt against uh Colorado and didn't play in the BYU game and then you know Alvin was going down his you know his journey we, we just made the switch there about midway through the game and then it just the light bulb went off so really that week of practice and how he's developed and how we kind of got him settled at one thing. And then he did a really good job of just being able to transition it out. You know, I, I think has really helped. And then on the flip side of it, you know, we've kind of moved Alvin back in, you know, having hands at the tackle position is a very, very, very important thing. Right. And I've always felt like if you go inside and play guard, you got to put your hands on people a lot faster than you used to. And so then transitioning back out makes it a little bit easier. Right. You know, did that with Liam Ryan years ago at Washington state. He ended up being a 36 game starter there, you know, so. Uh, but Sydney himself has done a tremendous job. Super proud of him. Just a very uh, focused young man uh, mm -hmm. wanted to. But, you know, it just wasn't his it wasn't his time, you know, and so we kind of went from there. Yeah. So when you look back at that Houston game film after that four game stretch where it seems like you couldn't be stopped running the ball, I don't mm -hmm. feel like you were shut down against Houston by any means. Like they had the bad snap, but there was a lot of seven, eight, nine yard carries. There wasn't a long explosive carry, but right. what from that game can you take and say, and you, you mentioned it before we hopped on here uh, recording, you were, you said, I want to be the guy that's like, we're going to get whipped. Well, what can you take from that Houston game to motivate your guys to be better for this last game against Kansas? Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I think before we had the bad snap and all that drama, the, um, I think we were like at 126 yards rushing in the first half, like that, that doesn't happen. To, those guys are unbelievable at Houston on defense. I mean, they, I tip my hat to them. They do a great job. And I just be honest with you, the second half, they just played harder than we did. You know, we weren't popping runs like we weren't in the line. They just played harder, you know. So there was a little complacency like, oh, this is we're going to keep doing what we've been doing because don't you know that we're, we're the mighty union of Baylor Bears football? We're the O-line and we're just going to roll our hat. No, that's not how it works. See, those guys are on scholarship, too, and they're going to play hard. So. I, I think that, well, you kind of got my gist of where I went with that motivation on that whole deal. So, um, you know, and to the kids' credit, I mean, they, they do a tremendous job and they work very hard and, and I'm very proud of all of them. But, you know, that kind of chapped me a little bit. And I'm sure it chapped them. Well, I don't, I'm not sure I know. They were disappointed in themselves. 
So coach, when you got to Baylor, uh, obviously you're going, you know, these guys were going from that wide zone scheme to a completely new scheme. And, you know, some guys fit different schemes better and, and things like that. What was kind of the biggest challenge for you when you first got to Baylor? And what was that first thing you felt like you had to address um, when you got to got the job? Really just uh, man slide principles and pass protection on a consistent basis. Like, you know, I mean, I know they've done that before and they did all that, you know, I'm not saying anything anyway, but the way we throw the football, there are some people on islands a lot. And so to learn that individual pass blocking skill, like to me, run blocking is about fundamentals and, and determination, right? If you can learn those and I knew we could get there to do that, but pass blocking is about, you know, feet, physicality and, and bending and hands. I mean, it's a, it's walking and chewing gum, right? I mean, after that first scrimmage, I was like, man, this ain't going to go well, <laughs> you know. But, again, they kept working, and they did a great job, and they got a lot better. So I felt like the pass pro was the first thing that I, it, like, jumped off the table at me. Because if we can't throw the ball, they can just load the box, and we're done. Yeah. So with that, you're playing the Kansas team this weekend that is one of the better teams in the Big 12 that getting after the passer. They obviously have mm -hmm. struggles in different areas, but two and a half sacks per game. The last five games, I think they're aver averaging three sacks per game. Right. What do you think makes them – just seeing them on film, what makes them so effective? And is that just kind of their mindset? We're going to try to get after the passer and create havoc. Is it from the down lineman? Is it from the linebackers? What does that look like for your unit in this game? You know, I tell you what, they're just probably the most persistent group we've played. I mean, they are just determined individuals. They're persistent. You can tell they're well coached. They've got a chip on their shoulder, blue-collar type mentality. Uh, we're coming with a lunch pail type deal. And so, uh, you know, we, we've got to we've got to step up our game. You know, not that anybody we haven't played before uh, hasn't. You know, I've always thought every week the person we were going to play was getting a, a, the our gonna, we were going to get our their best from us. You know, yeah. and they were going to give us their best. So, um, but we we've got to definitely respect everyone, fear no one, and but they're persistent. They play hard. All that it's really impressive to watch. So, coach, I know we get to see the starters every week, and you've had a very you know cohesive unit now. Uh, for a while, but who are some of the young guys that are really, you know, making a jump, you know, through the course of the season and maybe in the off season as well? You know, I think we use the term young guy, right? And so here's where, and I have to explain this to them a little bit, right? Alvin and Caden Siraki are still young guys. They're sophomores. And I realize they're six, five, 300 and whatever pounds. They're still puppies, right? And so they have had a tremendous growth tremendous growth here recently. Um, uh, Colton Siraki, Colton Thompson, uh, really doing a great job. Like all those young guys that we have on a day-to-day -day basis that are really kind of working with us. And then, you know, we'll send them down to the look team so they can get some reps against a quality opponent. And the reason for that is I always remember Elton Jenkins telling me like when he was a young pup at Mississippi state, he, he had to go against Jordan Simmons and or Jeffrey Simmons and Chris Jones every single day. Well, guess what? He got better, right? And now this guy's an all-pro. So send him down there, make him compete against Jackie and all those guys and in, 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 uh, Uncle Steve Linton and all that, right? Let him go against those guys. And then when they come to us, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. So the, another guy that I wanted to ask about, and it was a, it was a transfer, but – uh, Campbell Barrington playing right tackle for his whole career. He had played in that wide zone scheme, mm -hmm. but it, he's been really steady outside of the game where he had the head injury or whatever it was, where he had to miss some time. How has he taken to this group and what has he meant to this team, to this offensive line, particularly in, in his experience and everything he's been through? Well, father time. Um, <laughs> you know, he's uh he's, he's kind of special to me because I know he's been through, a little bit right he's had multiple line coaches and this is his last rodeo he and gap you know this is their last rodeo and it means something to him and i think when young guys see older guys nearing that next step in their their career and their path whatever it may be whether it's playing on sundays or going to get a real job and and doing something they love to do um a light bulb starts going off and he's been very uh expressive about that to everybody and uh, and then, you know, he also has kind of like the I call it dad humor. Like when he's in, he's kind of like the egger on in the room. Like he likes to like rile the kids up and then watch them all like go chaotic <laughs> towards each other. Like he'll get Omar and Colton Price just like going at each other in like 30 seconds. And it's the most comical thing to see on the flip side of that. When we're playing West Virginia. All seriousness, 
it's a tight ball game. We got a chance to walk away, do our thing. I mean, he rallied the troops, got after them. So this is what we're going to do. And, and, and we did it. So I think he's been very, 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 very um, important to the growth in this room and really buying into what we want to do. And that takes a certain level of maturity. Coach, you brought in a transfer this off season who I, I feel like has been talked about a lot just based on people we've talked to and heard from. Dave Randa mentioned him this week, and that's Omar uh, mm -hmm. just being a leader uh, for your room. How important has he been just adding him, you know, from the transfer portal this off season, getting him ingrained into, you know, your scheme, but then just seeing him be a, a leader and helping take this group forward from a, you know, I don't know, maturity standpoint or just uh, just getting better standpoint. Yeah, I think the biggest thing Omar brings to the table is his level of intensity. Um, I mean, I mean, he's going all gas, no brakes, and to the point where I have to like, hey, man, it's it's time to take a little bit off the top. Um, <laughs> and I like that. He's also the guy that I can get after, right? I can get after, and then he he gets fired up, and then the whole thing explodes, right? Or 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 he and I have this kind of relationship that I think is fun is, you know, he knows when I'm getting mad and he can kind of sense it, right? He knows when things aren't going the right way and he can sense it. But the other thing you have to do as a coach, you have to walk away and you have to let them learn how to handle it. You know, keep them in the framework of the box. These are the rules. When they start getting close to the edges, you got to pull them back in, you know? Uh, and I think he does a tremendous job of that. And just his, you know, he's he's been a winner everywhere he's been, right? He, Katie, he won. Uh, Montana State, he won. Uh, he, he, he knows how to win and he knows what it takes, right? So sometimes you have to let, you have to feed the beast and let it and let him go. Yeah, coach, really appreciate your time. Obviously, great visit with you, and uh, really fun to see your unit develop throughout this season. And uh, good luck this weekend against Kansas, mm -hmm. and uh, good luck in the bowl game as well. Yeah, thank you so much. Sick'em.